Dear friends, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her daughters and sons scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. So let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this fire. And grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all times and seasons belong to him, and all ages in, to him be glory and power through every age forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Christ our light. Christ our light. Christ our light.
Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen to our exalted. Slave 
destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a
Dear friends, having listened prayerfully to the exalted, let us now listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Lectura del libro de Génesis. En el principio creyó Dios el cielo y la tierra. La tierra era soledad y caos, y las tinieblas cubrían la faz del abismo. El Espíritu de Dios se movía sobre la superficie de las aguas. Dijo Dios, que exista la luz. Y la luz existió. Vio Dios que la luz era buena y separó la luz de las tinieblas. Llamó a la luz día y las tinieblas noche. Fue la tarde y la mañana del primer día. Dijo Dios que haya una bóveda entre las aguas que separe unas aguas de otras. Él hizo Dios una bóveda y separó con ella las aguas de arriba de las aguas de abajo. Y así fue. Llamó Dios a la bóveda cielo. Fue la tarde y la mañana del segundo día. Dijo Dios, que se junten las aguas de debajo del cielo en un solo lugar y que aparezca el suelo seco. Y así fue. Llamó Dios tierra al suelo seco y mar a la masa de las aguas. Y vio Dios que era bueno. Dijo Dios, verde la tierra con plantas que den semilla y árboles que den fruto y semilla, según su especie, sobre la tierra. Y así fue. Brotó de la tierra hierba verde y producía semilla, según su especie, y árboles que daban fruto y llevaban semilla, según su especie. Y vio Dios que era bueno. Fue la tarde y la mañana del tercer día. Dijo Dios, que haya lumbreras en la bóveda del cielo, que separen el día de la noche, señalen las estaciones, los días y los años, y luzcan en la bóveda del cielo para iluminar la tierra. Y así fue. Hizo Dios las dos grandes lumbreras, la lumbrera mayor para regir el día y la menor para regir la noche. Y también hizo las estrellas. Dios puso las lumbreras en la bóveda del cielo para iluminar la tierra, para regir el día y en la noche y separar la luz de las tinieblas. Y vio Dios que era bueno. Fue la tarde y la mañana del cuarto día. Dijo Dios, agítense las aguas con un hervidero de seres vivientes y revoloteen sobre la tierra las aves bajo la bóveda del cielo. Creyó Dios los grandes animales marinos y los vivientes que en el agua se deslizan y la pueblan, según su especie. Creo también el mundo de las aves según sus especies. Vio Dios que era bueno, y los bendijo, diciendo, Sean fecundos y multiplíquense, llenen las aguas del mar, que las aves se multipliquen en la tierra. Fue la tarde y la mañana del quinto día. Dijo Dios, Produzca la tierra vivientes según sus especies. Animales domésticos, reptiles y fieras, según sus especies. Y así fue. 
Hizo Dios las fieras, los animales domésticos y los reptiles, cada uno según su especie. Y vio Dios que era bueno. Dijo Dios, hagamos al hombre a nuestra imagen y semejanza, que domine a los peces del mar, a las aves del cielo, a los animales domésticos y a todo animal que arrastra sobre la tierra. Y creyó Dios al hombre a su imagen. A imagen suya lo creyó. Hombre y mujer los creyó. Y los bendijo Dios y les dijo, sean fecundos y multiplíquense, llenen la tierra y sometanla, dominen a los peces del mar, a las aves del cielo y a todo ser viviente que se mueve sobre la tierra. Y dijo Dios, He aquí que les entrego todos los plantas de semilla que hay sobre la faz de la tierra, y todos los árboles que producen fruto y semilla, para que las sirvan de alimento. Y a todas las fieras de la tierra, a todas las aves del cielo, a todos los reptiles de la tierra, a todos los seres que respiran, también les doy por alimento las verdes plantas. Y así fue. Vio Dios todo lo que había hecho y lo encontró muy bueno. Fue la tarde y la mañana del sexto día. Así quedaron concluidos el cielo y la tierra con todos sus ornamentos y terminada su obra, descansó Dios el séptimo día de todo cuanto había hecho. Palabra de Dios. Thanks. 
springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. There the birds of heaven build their nests. From the branches they sing their song. Lord, sing not your spirit. Lord, sing not your spirit. Lord, sing not your spirit. And in all the face of me. From your dwelling you water the hills, by your works the earth has its fill. You make the grass grow for the cattle, and plants to serve mankind's need, that he may bring forth bread from the earth. Spirit, Lord, send out your spirit, Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your spirit. Lord, send out your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that in them exists the most marvelous form of the world's creation, in the beginning, except that in the end of all the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed to lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff and, with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. 
but the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. And he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day, from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I sing to God, triumphant is he.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the water of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Feed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people. For only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you 
and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord, 
Let us pray. O oh God, you make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too, must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lord, his love endures forever. Let the house of Israel say his love lasts forever. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. These are quite strange times, and certain practices that we have and have to take up are also very strange, kind of weird, actually. At St. Mary's Hall, where I live with all the Jesuits, we have a huge dining room. It's usually a place where we gather at a table and have conversation. Well, we now each sit at separate tables in the dining room in shifts. It's not assigned shifts. We kind of figure it out. And we have to shout from one table to another to have any type of conversation. In exasperation over this, one night I said, well, how can we say Happy Easter this year? And a prominent Jesuit theologian that we live with, Bob Daly, he said without missing a beat, Jesus Christ is risen. That's the way we say Happy Easter. You know, it got me to thinking, because I was cut to the quick, because really, when I sometimes say Happy Easter, and maybe you do too, I think about jelly beans and nice hard-boiled eggs that are colored, and, and then we have uh, chocolate Easter rabbits, and best of all, all the traditional dishes that we eat for Easter dinner, sharing them with family and friends. 
And it's such a wonderful celebration. But amidst all that sometimes, we can lose our focus. That's what I thought. Yes, we can lose our focus. That Jesus Christ is risen. And sometimes we just don't feel that. We don't feel that joy of resurrection. St. Ignatius, though, in the spiritual exercises that I spoke about last night, in the fourth week of the exercises, after we've gone through the passion with Jesus. Now we're supposed to share with Jesus in his joy. That's what Easter is about, sharing with his joy. Not focusing on self and whether we feel joyful or not. To go along with Jesus and see how he consoled his friend how he told them not to be afraid, and the joy that he had in being able to do that, to show them that he has conquered sin and death. All that he said about love, and mercy, and forgiveness is now solidified because he has revealed himself fully and finally in the resurrection as the Son of God. The Word made flesh, was crucified, died, and entombed, but rose again to save us. And we symbolize that. Yesterday, we had the cross, and we sang, Behold the wood of the cross, three times. Then tonight, we have the Easter candle replacing the wood of the cross. And in the same three places, singing the light of Christ. Jesus is the light that has come into the world, and now he is risen. And perhaps even when we cannot feel our own joy, we might be able to pray and enter into his joy, his joy of knowing that he is always with us, alive. the end of the spiritual exercises. St. Ignatius has us do a contemplation about love, seeing that all good gifts come from our God. And in that contemplation, we're to remember all the previous weeks of the exercises, all those weeks of prayer that we prayed and experienced, going back into our memories of all that God that we've experienced in prayer. And it's to help us to now see with the eyes of Christ our world. And we need to do that today especially during these challenging times. To look with the eyes of Christ, to ask for that grace. And then we will know the transformative power of Easter, the transformative power of that resurrection, that from death there'll be new life. 
the end of the exercises too. St. Ignatius has an audacious prayer, the susiope, the take and receive. Take and receive, O Lord, all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will, all I have and possess. Thou hast given all to me. To thee I return it. Dispose of it wholly according to your will. Give me only your love and your grace that that is enough for me. During these times, can we have the grace to pray that prayer from the depths of our hearts so that we will be filled with the love and the grace of Christ, seeing all things through his eyes, the eyes of the resurrection. And if we can do that, then we can say both Happy Easter, but more importantly, Jesus Christ is risen, as he said. Alleluia, alleluia. At this time in our vigil, we would be inviting our catechumens and the elect to present themselves for baptism. After a litany of the saints, the blessing of water in our baptismal font, and their own baptism, they, along with our candidates for confirmation, for full reception into the church, would come forward as well. Since that is not possible at this time, I invite us to pray a litany of the saints for all our catechumens and candidates, both of our parish and throughout the world. So let us pray. and 
Dear friends, I hope you have before you a bowl of water, for after we first bless together this water and then profess our faith, I will invite you to bless yourself. And so let us first ask our God's blessing upon this water, which we will use as a memorial of our baptism. May God graciously renew us that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. I invite you now then to join with me to extend your hands in blessing. God of all creation, in your mercy, be present to us, your people, who keep vigil on this most sacred day night. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaim the new creation, the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you renew us as your beloved. Therefore, may this water be for us a reminder of the baptism we have received as we now turn to you to renew our baptismal promises and some of what those sacred promises truly entail. And so I ask you, do you accept Jesus as your teacher, as the example whom you all will always imitate, and as the one in whom the mystery of God's love for the world has been fully revealed? I do. Do you dedicate yourself to seeking the kingdom of God and God's justice, to praying daily, to meditating on the Gospels, to celebrating the Eucharist faithfully and devoutly, and to offer alms? I do. Do you commit yourself to resisting the spirit of consumerism and materialism that is so strong in our culture? And instead, will you live in the spirit of Pope Francis's encyclical, Laudato Si, caring daily for our environment? Do you pledge yourself to be mindful and supportive of the poor and oppressed, of immigrants and refugees, of all those who are marginalized in any way? Do you assent to your responsibility for building community, 
for journeying with youth, and for being people of compassion and reconciliation, authentic ambassadors for Christ. I do. Do you promise to thank and praise God by your works and by your actions in times of prosperity as well as in moments of suffering, giving loyal witness to Christ by your faith, your hope, and the style of your living? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, who, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried and rose again from the dead? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and life everlasting? I do. Having professed our faith together and the challenges that our renunciation of Satan, sin, and evil entails, I invite you sometime during our hymn, when you are ready, to bless yourself with water as a reminder of your baptism in Christ. As a people blessed to believe that Christ is risen, as he said, so that through him, with him, and in him, we can now confidently offer our prayers and petitions. Como pueblo bendecido que cree que Cristo ha resucitado, como él dijo, de modo que a través de él, con él y en él, ahora podemos ofrecer con confianza nuestras oraciones y peticiones. For all peoples, cultures, and religions of the world, may the transforming power of Christ's resurrection bring us unity and harmony, peace and justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Para todos los pueblos, culturas, y religiones del mundo, que el poder transformador de la resurrección de Cristo nos traiga unidad y armonía, paz y justicia. Oremos. Te rogamos, Te rogamos, Señor. For the church, the people of God, may we reaffirm and deepen our baptismal commitment to love and serve God and one another. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Para que la iglesia, el pueblo de Dios, que nosotros reafirmemos y profundicemos nuestro compromiso bautismal de amar y servir a Dios y a los demás. Oremos. 
Te rogamos, Señor. For our elect and all those who are preparing to be received into the church, hopefully sometime this spring. May their reception of the sacraments help deepen their faith and hope in our risen Lord, Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Para nuestra nación, que nuestras medidas de precaución cooperativas para hacer nuestra parte para contener el coronavirus ayuden a poner fin rápidamente a esta pandemia mundial actual. Oremos. Te regamos, Señor. For our nation, may our cooperative precautionary measures to do our part to contain the coronavirus help to bring a swift end to this current worldwide pandemic. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, we will remember among them those suffering from the coronavirus and other illnesses, those grieving the loss of loved ones, the homeless, and those experiencing fear and stress from economic hardship, those intentions listed on the Boston College prayer wall, and we pause now for a moment to add our own special intention. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Para aquellos que han pedido nuestras oraciones, recordamos entre ellos a los que sufren del coronavirus y otras enfermedades, a los que lloran la muerte de seres queridos, a las personas sin hogar y a los que experimentan miedo y estrés por la dificultad económica. Las intenciones enumeradas en nuestra pared de oraciones del Boston College Y ahora nos detenemos por un momento para agregar nuestra propia intención especial. Oremos. Te regamos, Señor. Para aquellos que han muerto, entre ellos Roberta Ryan, Leti Chan Chao, Maeve y Gideon McKean y Claire Corcoran. Y aquellos a quienes recordamos ahora. Que puedan compartir plenamente la victoria de Cristo sobre la muerte. Oremos. Te regamos, Señor. For those who have died, among them, Roberta Ryan, Leti Chan Chao, Maeve and Gideon McKean, Claire Corcoran, and those we call to mind now. May they share fully in Christ's victory over death. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Dios de la vida nueva, continúa transformándonos en Cristo para ser instrumentos de tu amor y misericordia por todo el mundo. Te lo pedimos por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Amen. God of new life, continue to, to transform us in Christ to be instruments of your love and mercy throughout the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Understanding my entire
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our loving and merciful God. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice from our hands to the praise, praise and, glory and glory of God's name, name for our, our good, good and the good of all God's holy church. church. Almighty and merciful God, accept, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. El Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Levantamos el corazón. Levantemos levanta hacia el Señor. Demos gracias el Señor nuestro Dios. Es justo y necesario. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought before you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Que el nos transforme en ofrenda permanente para que gocemos de tu heredad junto con tus elegidos, con María, la Virgen Madre de Dios, su esposo San José, los apóstoles y los mártires, San Ignacio y todos los santos, por cuya intercesión confiamos obtener siempre tu ayuda. Te pedimos, Padre, que esta víctima de reconciliación Traiga la paz y la salvación al mundo entero. Conferme en la fe y en la caridad a tu iglesia, peregrina en la tierra, a tu servidor el Papa Francesco, a nuestro obispo Sean, al orden episcopal, a los presbíteros y diáconos, a, lo, a las hermanas religiosas y los hermanos religiosos, y a todo el pueblo redimido por ti. Atiende los deseos y súplicas de esta familia que has congregado en tu presencia. Reúne en torno a ti, Padre misericordioso, a todos tus hijos dispersos por el mundo. A nuestros hermanos difuntos y a cuantos murieron en tu amistad, recibelos en tu reino, donde esperamos gozar todos juntos de la plenitud eterna de tu gloria, por Cristo, Señor nuestro, por quien concedes al mundo todos los bienes. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all fear, worry, and distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and so say to us, 
peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins and failings, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you should me. enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Believe what you see. See who you are, the body.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, Almighty God, the spirit of your love. And in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this Paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have celebrated the thanksgiving feast of the victory of our God. For Jesus Christ is risen, as he said. It has given us new birth. And though we are sadly separated from one another this night, in order to be safely reunited with one another in the future, I would like, as I always do at the end of the Easter Vigil, to acknowledge my deep gratitude to, to those who made our Triduum possible. This year, it was a small but powerful group. The extremely beautiful design and creation along with all the preparations for each liturgy, were done solely because of the vision and energy of Eric Kadel. You saw him also serving as our acolyte through the Triduum. Thank you so very much, Eric, for making our church look so beautiful. I'm still not quite sure, though, where you got those beautiful Easter lilies. Maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> Behind the scenes was Brian Maher, the president of Nativity Prep, who, with his special sort of magic camera, was able to capture for you our celebration. Many thanks, Brian. Your help has been absolutely essential. I'd like also to thank our lectors, Sister Diane, Kathy, Mar, and Anna Rose Joinson, our musicians, Matt Anderson, our director of music, joined with by Alan McCourt and Rachel Webb. Wasn't the music beautiful? In fact, they played all sorts of surprises for me. And I didn't really know the songs until I heard them. <laughs> so as always, the music was beautifully inspiring. I'd also like to thank my associate pastor, Father Don. I'm so glad he was able to pray with us in Spanish, not his native language. Now, truly, a very special word of thanks must go to another person behind the scenes, Michael Sennett. Without him, we simply could not bring you any of these liturgies. No programs, online, nothing. Michael spends countless hours on production and communication often from very early in the morning to well into the night. I know, because I get the emails and the texts. Michael, I believe I speak for the entire parish and all those joining us in offering our deepest gratitude for all you did and continue to do. 
And finally, my sincere and warm thanks to all of you who have joined us. The parish staff and I promise to continue to communicate with you and to do all we can to help enrich your spiritual life during this time of separation. Know of our thoughts and heartfelt prayers. We miss you so very, very much and hope we can soon be with each other once again. I have to turn on my microphone to tell you to bow your heads. Or today, because it's Easter, raise your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of evil. And we say together, Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Eucharistic Paschal celebration has ended. Let us go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord and one another. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Happy Easter, Jesus Christ is risen.